Okay, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Tuesday's uh, caucus for our Scranton City Council meeting. Today is Tuesday, October 20th. I hope everybody is doing well and your families are doing well. Uh, today's caucus, we have uh, two guests, Dave Trevisani and uh, Bob's, Bob Sweet. I'm used to calling him Bud Sweet uh, from NDC. And uh, they are going to give us uh, an update, a quarterly update on the uh, Scranton parking system. Uh, so they'll talk about uh, the uh, an operations update, basically, and uh, capital improvements and the financial performance uh, of the parking system. So Mr. Trevisani and Mr. Sweet, I want to thank you for uh, coming to our caucus and taking the time uh, to give us a quarterly update. Um, if you want to start really briefly just by giving us uh, kind of an overview of your involvement in this whole thing, if, if, uh, if you want to start off that way for some of the newer members again, and then sure. uh, you can go right into the presentation and we'll take questions at the end. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Councilman, thank you very much. Um, I was hoping that um, Ben Anderson, who is a, a newly hired uh, employee of NDC, who's going to be a project manager for our for NDC's East Coast portfolio for social infrastructure. He couldn't make it today. He's studying for his PhD and he has exams today. So we let him off the hook, but you will meet him, meet him soon. Um, in the way of background, I, mean, I work for the National Development Council. NDC is a not-for-profit based in New York that works with municipalities around the country and helps them with community development activities. One, one of our programs is, is called our Social Infrastructure Development Program, which is this project sits within. We projects, financing, that they can manage on their own, whatever, they can't issue the bonds or they don't have the staff capacity or the resources to manage a complicated construction project. Um, we got involved in this in 2016. The this transaction was closed um, in June. And we, um, the arrangement was a, a, a concession lease of the on and the off street parking um, from this, of the city of Scranton through Community Development for Scranton Inc., which is a subsidiary of the National Development Council. Um, and it is tasked with uh, the neighborhood of $40 million. Um, it has hired ABM to manage the parking system. ABM is a professional uh, Fortune 500 company that is managing this. Um, we're responsible and obligated for the bonds. Um, so we manage the system. We have managed the construction project. I'll let you one. And um, it's a 45-year concession lease, so these are public assets. So the city of Scranton will get these back someday, some 45 years if they want them, through refinancing the debt. But our role as a, as a not-for-profit is to help municipalities manage these sometimes difficult projects um, more efficiently uh, without having the city to, to borrow the money directly. But there is a board of directors here that, is, that governs the oversight of this, and the city sits on the board. Um, president of the Common Council by right, the mayor by right, and the city comptroller by right. So they are very involved in the process. They approve budgets. They approve contracts. Because at the end of the day, ultimately the city will get back someday. So um, hopefully that was sufficient background, Councilman. Yes, that was great. Thank you. Um, so so um, we, we've been having these quarterly meetings and I, I think they've been really helpful and beneficial for us and it, and it gives you a sense of where we are. And it's, it's difficult. Um, some good news there. And um, even though not great news, still I think some good news on the finances as things are starting to starting to get slowly on the, on the, on the progress side. So why don't I just jump in? The, the Linden Garage and the overall parking uh, construction is now complete. Um, we had our final through last week, um, just some minor punch list items. Um, we'll finish those up over the next few weeks. But it, it, it's, this is finished. This, it, I think it's great. It, it, it looks brand new. It feels brand new. A um, couple of pictures here for you. This is the helix on the left-hand side. This is a new coating that I think will extend the life of the, of the garage. Here again, some other pictures. I really think the contractor did a good job. Now it took a lot longer than we thought uh, because the garage was a lot worse than we thought. Um, you know, when you get into these things and you start opening up concrete and you start looking at the the, the metals uh, uh, system that, that hold the garage together, 
much more work he's done than we originally thought. So, but it is now finally finished. There'll be no more jackhammering on this garage in downtown. I think the residents will be happy about that. Um, and this is good for another 30 years. Um, it really is. I, I think the, the good news again is that this project finished on budget. The top two floors in place, and we added in the new on-street system that was installed. Um, the project is 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 on budget, and we haven't have final numbers yet, but we expect this to be the final tally or close to the final tally for both the new on-street gas and all uh, purposes. The nine million. Dave, I'm sorry. For some reason, yep. is, it, is it? I just want to make sure it's just not my computer. Uh, Kyle, is it breaking up on you as well? Yeah, and it's breaking up on me as well. And yeah, I, it's glitching. It's yeah, glitching. your audio is just coming in and out, uh, Dave, a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, I'm not sure what to do about that. Um, Maybe if you turn off your video, sometimes I know that works and just... Um, turn off my camera? Yeah, sometimes that helps. We'll see if that works. Okay, okay. try that. My, my camera's off. Um, Feel free to ask questions. Um, the, the, the nine million six, um, four million of that is, in, is a multimodal grant from the state of Pennsylvania. The balance of that is bond proceeds that were set aside in 2016 for this reconstruction. So, so really all good news there. I, I think finally we're at a place where these garages are in great shape and, and, and it's gonna be a much better experience for the public. Um, the electric city garage reconstruction, I know we've been challenged to, to try to get this moving. It's been rather slow. Some work had been done over the past few years. Um, recently, earlier this year, we finalized an agreement with the garage owner to um, uh, better manage the an oversight of the, of the garage. Things have been going extremely well since then. Um, some pictures here. Uh, this garage has a, had a lot of work that needed to be done. The garage was construction. A lot of the concrete had to be torn out, it had to be shut off on the upper levels. Again, very large areas of concrete had to be replaced. The rebar had to be replaced. This is a, some of the work being done on the right here, whether it's concrete. We closed the garage totally to the public in August. We expect to open the garage back up in December. It won't be finished, but most of the major work will have been done and the concrete work will have been done. Um, and some of the work that was done over the past few years will get us to the point where we can open this and operate uh, for the general public. Uh, by completion date, but uh, the, the, the crews are working with the owner. We have our own engine in the project um, very closely, giving us regular reports. So I got to say that the, the communication and the cooperation has been much improved. So this is, uh, see this is all good news. Here you see the budget, $5 million to, um, $2.8 million is, is financed from the bond proceeds that we closed in 2016. And the balance of this is coming from the electric company, which is the owner of the electric city garage. So we've been really, really pleased with progressing the way that it has been. That's the construction update. So, so I think all good news, very, very little in the way Jack to the financial Dave, yep. I'm I'm sorry, you're breaking up, so it's really hard to hear you. Um, mm. it must be your connection, but if you if there's a way that you can call in, you can Maybe keep I'll your call in. Okay, yep. yeah. If you can keep your computer right. on and then mute yourself, and then if you call in, I'll let you in on the phone. I think that'll probably work better. Let me try that. Apologize. Okay. No, that's okay. It may just be my uh, my internet connection, but it's it could be the connection. Good. Yeah, that, that's happened before. Okay. So we'll give you a minute to call in. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna have to exit this to go back and get the call in number. Uh, you know what? If you give me one minute, I'll I'll put it right in the the chat thing here, so you'll be able to see it. Hold okay, great. Second. Thank you. Yep.
Okay, Dave, I'm putting it in right now. Let me know if you can see it. You are unmuted. Un 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 he has to mute his computer. Yeah, you have to mute your computer, Dave. Can you hear me better now? Yep. Yeah, you're you're good now. Okay. I apologize. Is there is there any reason for me to go back, down, ladies and gentlemen? Are no, I, I, I don't have any. Update? Yeah, I don't have any. This is Bill. Uh, I don't have any questions on the construction update. Does any other council members have any uh, questions on any of the previous slides? No. Okay. I think we're good. You can continue, great. Dave. Thanks. Okay. Great. Dan, again, again, I, I again apologize for that. Um, no, it's okay. Onto the, on, on to the finances. I, I think as, as, as we've reviewed for you in previous meetings, you know, COVID has had a significant impact on revenue for the parking system. Um, the numbers you have in front of you here are through September 30th. Um, and, and these are compared to, to budget. Um, you know, and our budget is generated to meet our obligations, maintain the garages, um, pay staff, pay operating expenses and pay debt service to meet our financial covenants in the bond documents. So there's not extra money here. All the dollars that come in go through to pay bills and they go into the waterfall and they may go into reserve accounts, both capital and operating, but all the money that's generated by the system stays in the system. So the, the, the revenue through September 30 is a million 165 below where we budgeted and expected it to be to this point in time. We've worked hard to try to save expenses where we can. We've laid off some employees and furloughed employees. We, we, we deferred projects and we've been able to save a half a million dollars against our budget to date um, to try to mitigate the, the loss of revenue due to, due to COVID. So the NOI is revenue less expense, and that's off budget by 662,000. Now, that of course is not great news. Um, we expect that to continue to, to get worse through the course of the rest of the year. The good news is things are getting better. I mean, April was awful, May was awful. There was really literally no revenue. In June, we saw a little uptick, um, very little. But, but the past couple months, we've seen things start to get a little bit better. I mean, not where we expect it to be. It's certainly not business as usual, but things have gotten better. For example, in, in, in July, when we reported to you, we had almost $800,000 in revenue. We were off budget. So even though we're going in the wrong direction here, it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. Um, so we, had, we were almost $500,000 off budget on net operating income, NOI. Well, now we're at 662, which over three months is, again, still not good, but not, not awful. I mean, most of the damage that was done in the worst, in the worst months were, were really April, May, and June. So, again, we're, what we're seeing to be, if you want to look at the specifics a little bit, which is the next slide. Dave, you have to mute your computer. Yeah, I don't. I, uh, actually, I don't actually, what do you think he needs to do is get out of Zoom. Good. Just call. Sorry, I thought I was. I thought I was muted. Um, so let me go back to this slide. So this is a summary of the um, year-to-date um, 
September 30 number. So you, where, where the real issues are, and if you look at the, the current period, the current month, you'll see monthlies are not too far off from where we budgeted. So that's good news. I mean, in April, May, and June, it was awful. The monthly parkers weren't coming. They were staying home. They canceled their, their monthly parking permit, and they weren't paying. The good news, again, is that folks are paying their monthly bill, and they're coming downtown. And, and even if they're not coming every day, they're still coming downtown. I think where we're going to be challenged, you'll notice in the transient revenue, those are visitors who park in the garages. Those folks are not yet coming back downtown. So you can see we're off by $46,000 there um, as compared to budget. Um, the other area where I think we're going to struggle is in the meter revenue. I mean, folks aren't coming downtown and parking on the street right now. I think they will, and things have gotten better over the past few months, and we expect them to continue to get better. But um, those are the areas where I think we're going to have, you know, the most difficulty, and that will continue um, going forward. Um, we're in the process of putting together our budget for 2021. Um, you know, it's, we don't have a crystal ball. I, I think we see business coming back. Um, when will it be back to you know normal or what we have expected this to be? I don't think anybody knows, but I, I think we're we're slowly slowly getting back to where I think we want to be. Will it take three months next year, six months, twelve months next year? I don't know that we know. So we're working very closely with our bondholders. We actually had an update meeting this morning. Um, we do have reserves balances, and those reserve balances will help us pay our bills and help us meet our debt obligations for the next, uh, you know, three to five months. You know, after that, I think that we're going to need some relief. I don't think there's any question that our bondholders recognize that and that they have, they, they have said that they will work with us. Um, but they're, they're taking a wait and see right now as well. They, they want to see how this comes back and what it looks like. And um, we'll make those decisions as the next three to six months unfold. Okay, uh, thank you, Dave. Um, I just have one question. So, and we've talked uh, prior to this, but just so I understand, um, you know, obviously this this problem um, is not unique to Scranton. Um, because of the pandemic, I would imagine that all parking systems throughout the state and the country are are suffering a little bit in terms of revenue. But one of the, the questions that I have is, so right now uh, you're working with, uh, NDC's working with uh, their, their bondholders and you don't foresee an instance in the immediate future where you would have to come back at this point and ask for a rate increase outside of the rate schedule that's already fixed in the, in the agreement. Yeah, that, that, that is correct. Two, two, two points on that. Um, one, I, I, I don't think a rate increase would be, would be productive. I, I think um, that's like a, a business owner who's selling goods and his customer comes in and he's used to paying for that service. And then the business is having some difficulty and, he, and, he, and he's raising his prices to try to make up for his losses. I, I think that's counterproductive and that's not the plan. Um, now, you know, we need to work with our bondholders. We if you remember last year, we had the ability to go to $100 on the monthly rate. We, we did not need to. We, we kept that at a modest increase, and we went to $92. Um, so the, the plan is not to raise rates if we can avoid it. I mean, we don't expect to, to, to raise rates. Um, we're going to need to figure out a way to, to mitigate these circumstances without, without that, and because we just think it will hurt the businesses downtown and want to avoid that if, if, uh, if possible. Okay, I, I would agree with you there. I, and, you know, we've spoken about this uh, previously, but I just think in terms of <clears throat> the economic development uh, of the city and especially downtown, it would be, you know, kind of, uh, I agree with what you said, counterproductive, um, trying to, as we come out of this pandemic, hopefully next year, trying to get back on our feet, uh, I think raising rates would be uh, the wrong move, but I understand we're uh, obviously we're in a pinch here in terms of uh, of, of revenue. Um, the one thing that uh, was in the newspaper recently is the kind of the idea that you you might be looking at um, a boot. I, I, I guess you would call it a barnacle, from what I read in the paper, right? Uh, right. Where you would kind of go after uh, those uh, people who have 
a lot of unpaid parking tickets. So can you just talk right. about that and maybe what what's out there uh, in terms of uh, revenue that we've not received yet from people who have uh, a lot of overdue parking tickets and all, and all those fees? Yeah, I think that, that that's a really good question. I mean, we we have been, you know, any parking system in order to run it efficiently, um, you, you just want folks to pay for what they use. And so for those folks who aren't paying, that's why you have a, a citation system so that you're giving tickets to those folks who don't follow the rules. And you have to have some way to encourage those folks to pay. And, and an immobilization system is the way that the parking world does that because nobody wants that to happen, obviously. Um, so we have, we have struggled in putting that system in place because of the way that the ordinance reads, the combination of state law processes with the magistrate. And we've been working through those issues. And I think we're getting a lot closer. We had some meetings recently with some professionals in the industry the guide, that are guiding us on how to go about this and put this process in place because it will think, we think it will only help. Just to give you an example, we only collect about 20% of the revenue um, from the tickets that we issue. And that's just, that's not a good place to be. I mean, you're not going to collect every dollar that you, when you issue a ticket, but we certainly should be collecting more than 20%. And we think that this system, once we're able to put it in place, will encourage folks to one, pay their bill if we have them, if they have one, but more importantly, just pay for the services that you're using to be fair to everybody else that's paying their fair share for using the system. So, um, you know, the barnacle system is, is the latest, greatest technology. If, if this ever happens to you, it's, it's really not that difficult. It's more different than, it's different than a boot. It's, a boot is cumbersome. It's hard to put on. It's a pain for the owner of the car. But this is something that's easier to use if you unfortunately fall into that circumstance. And um, it's working in a number of cities and, and around the country and um, I believe in, in, in some areas in Pennsylvania. So we're, we have no time frame yet. We have no agreement to put this in place, but I hope to have something in place um, you know, by early next year because revenue now is very important. And um, we really need to be collecting more revenue from the folks who aren't paying their tickets. Thanks, Dave. And last question from me. Uh, you know, I, I think I heard you uh, right before when you said that, <clears throat> you know, because of the revenue crunch, you're relying a lot on your reserves now and working with uh, the bondholders. Right. Do you think in your estimation that uh, you could withstand another, you know, six months like this, the six months in, in 2020 in terms of the, the effect that the pandemic had? Like if we look towards 2021 and what does that look like? And, um, you know, because I, I, I understand you can only rely on your reserves for so long. I think that we're going to be fine through January. Um, you know, our bond payments aren't due every month. So they're due semi-annually. Um, so I, I think that January will, will be, we, we, and I haven't looked at this most recently, but um, I think after January, we're going to, have to start looking at it really closely. Okay, thank you. Uh, does any other council members have questions for Mr. Trevisani? I don't, I don't have a question, just a, a quick statement that I, I'm glad, I'm also glad to see there's no rate increase uh, for now. And because I do believe it would be counterproductive. So thank you for that. Thank you, Councilman McAndrews. Does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Trevisani? Uh, I have a couple. Uh, <clears throat> so just going back to the barnacle thing that uh, Councilman Gaughan brought up. How are people who are delinquent and not paying their parking tickets notified? Um, when if we you don't pay a parking ticket, ticket, are you? Yep, yeah, we, we mail them a notice. Yep, yeah. and then after so many days that they don't respond to that notice, we send, send it to the magistrate. That's the current process. And then the magistrate does their thing, they call for a hearing and then if the magistrate collects revenue, they send us that revenue. But again, the reality of that system is without an immobilization system, we're only collecting 20% of the amount of the tickets that we issue. And it, will there be a threshold where that, that system would be used? You know, it's, it's not like you have one or two, you know, but you have six, seven, eight, 
Well, you know, the, the, so on. That's a good. That's a good question. The, the way the ordinance reads now is that if you if you have a ticket, an unpaid ticket from a, from a parking in a handicap zone, that's an automatic. If you if you don't pay that ticket, if you have three tickets, any violation outstanding, not paid, that's a reason for being immobilized. And then the third is if you get a ticket and then we can't find you, that your car's not registered, no inspection, you, you're, you know, there's a bad address and it comes back address not found based on the, the address we received from the DMV, then that would be a reason to be able to mobilize. Those are the three reasons. And that's all outlined in the ordinance. And I think I can add that's the, the same frustration that the magistrate has. They they've tried to assist us in collecting uh, on the tickets, but they they get bad addresses or they get returned envelopes and they can't they can't find where the people now reside. I think if okay. we could start that just just for folks who you can't find them, they don't have a registration and or they're not inspected. Uh, that would be a, a huge help right there. But but um, we're, 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 we're working through the details of this process and we think we're getting a lot closer to be able to put this in place. Um, another question I have too is, <clears throat> there are certain parking spots in each garage, if I'm not correct, let me know, but there are certain parking spots in each garage that are dedicated to monthly parkers, transient park parkers, like, is there a limit on monthly? I guess my question is, is there a limit on monthly, uh, you know, a monthly pass for the Linden garage compared to the Electric City garage or any of the others? No, not really. We 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 have a, 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 a what we call a premium program. So there's some dedicated spots that if someone wants to pay more. And I think that's $120 a month because you that's want to be on the that's, that's correct. It's 100. That's it's correct. That's 120 a month. And it's you know people that want access uh, would be access to stairwells, uh, exits, and particularly in place like uh, in uh, in Connell Garage, people are close to their residence, so they're they're willing to pay that premium. Right, but 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 outside of that, there's no other dedicated spaces, and we have plenty of room. Would you be able to uh, just pass along? I'd, I'd just be interested to see in what uh, you know what the capacity is and and what we're filling in terms of each garage, you know, on a monthly sure. basis. Yeah, sure. I, I can tell you generally that the Connell is often very busy because it's, there's apartments right next door. I think Linden yeah. probably next. So Medallion is with the hotel, so they get more transients, but we could certainly give you the occupancy for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Dunahue. Any other questions for Mr. Trevisani? Yeah, I, I guess in the same kind of questioning as Mr. Dunahue was saying with some people with the outstanding fines, are, are we seeing that there's people that are um, multiple offenders or who have a large amount of tickets. I know a, a few years ago, there was a story that I, I remember reading about people that had uh, large quantities of tickets. Are we finding that that's still something that's occurring? Yes. Yes. I couldn't give you the numbers without going to look, but um, we, we think that's a problem. And I, and I think an immobilization system is something that that, that acts as a deterrent um, because when people get a number of tickets built up, um, what they're hoping for is to get a discount or not a, never have to pay. And that's, um, that's not helpful to us. So we just want them to pay for when they park is all. And honestly, it's, it's less expensive. If you have to pay those tickets, it's a lot less expensive just to pay for part your parking and pay for the ticket. So um, this is why it's set up as a deterrent. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that answers my question that even after that story came out and that was brought to light, people are still, um, continuously um, repeat offending. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And that's why we're really trying to push for this immobilization system to get it started. And there's, and we're, we think we're getting closer. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, this is, this is Bill gone again, real quick. Do you have a, um, uh, would you be able to provide us with the number of outstanding uh, fines? 
Yes, I, okay. I could get that. Well, um, yeah, I, I just talked to the EBM this morning, actually, actually and they, they're going to provide those numbers. I'm not sure exactly. What, it may be for the year. I think I can give you a dollar amount. Okay. Um, so you can see, the but the numbers are big, and, and we're not collecting all of it. If you look at the recovery revenue, citations, and credit card fees, most of that's in the citations. So there's the, the numbers of the, the, the amount of money we collect from citations is substantial, but it, it, it should be a lot bigger if people paid. And the goal is to have that number go down and the revenue go up and people just pay for what they use. Right. That would be our goal. We don't, we don't want to issue tickets and immobilize cars. We just want, we just want people to pay for what they use and we'll all be better off. Right. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Rothschild, I'm sorry if I cut you off. Fine. Um, I had a few questions. Uh, and the first thing I just want to say, I'm glad to see that the construction has continued on the garages uh, and that the one was completed and that the Electric City garage is, is near completion. I know earlier in the year we had some uh, concerns about that. So I'm happy to right. see that that's been addressed. Um, I, on the chart, I know it's just, um, you know, you had the monthly uh, um, revenue for September and I'm sure what you have budgeted maybe for the winter months, I'm assuming is uh, less uh, for some of those things like transient parking um, right. as opposed to the warmer months where you expect more downtown traffic and, and visitors. Uh, That's correct. Okay. And um, linking a little bit here, I think I had uh, one more thing. Um, oh, uh, so something I had the recent experience with, and I'm not sure if, um, if other parkers are also uh, having this, but um, I've gone downtown for something and I was in a bit of a rush and I um, went to go pay the, at the, um, at the computer and, the, the accept, yeah. yeah, and it wouldn't accept my card. Uh, and I tried other cards and it just, it wasn't like during that a card was even swiped. And so luckily I had a few quarters on me and that was able to, um, you know, keep me for the, for the time that I was going to be using it. But for someone else who might not have quarters yeah. on them and then, you know, the car doesn't take it. Um, do they then like, would they appeal a ticket and say, Hey, your card reader wasn't working. Like how often does that happen? Cause I have had like just personal experiences in the past of the equipment not um, not working properly. Yeah, I, I don't know that I have, I don't have any statistics to share with you, but I can certainly check in with ABM. I, I think the systems tend to be pretty reliable. And if uh, if folks are report an issue, I, I, I know that the folks, the, the, the technicians get on it right away. Um, if somebody gets a ticket and, and, and the machine is not working and we're able to verify that that was the case, um, I know that we 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 try, we try to work with the work with the the customers. So um, um, I, I know it's not perfect. You know, someone's in a rush. They they don't have time to complain. They they go and they do their thing, and then they get a ticket, and then they go home mad, <laughs> and that's unfortunate. And so I uh, you know this is technology. It doesn't work 100 percent of the time, but I think we try to be aware and respond in a, in a positive in a positive way where we can. Okay. Yeah. I would just say it's not, it's not like the first time something like that has happened to me. So I know it must right. be happening to other people. Um, and uh, uh, I know that can be frustrating. So it'd be nice to have maybe the numbers on, it. yeah, like how often you have I'll, a, a kind of malfunction. I'll, 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 I'll bring it up to ABM and I'm sure they have some statistics as to how often the, the meters are out of service. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Trevisani? Councilman Gond, uh, the, the sure. answer to these questions, should I be providing these to you and then you'll share? Is that probably the best way to, to handle this? Yeah, you could send them to uh, our city clerk, Lori Reed, and she'll uh, distribute them to okay. the rest of the council. All right, excellent. Okay, very okay. good. I don't think there's any more questions. Uh, Dave and uh, Bob, thanks so much for, for coming and uh, giving us a quarterly update. I think this relationship between the city and, and NDC is really important, especially uh, with, you know, the some of the challenges and hurdles that we face. But I think as long as we work together and 
you know, we can we can get through this tough time. So thanks again for coming and give us giving us an update, and uh, we we'll look forward to continuing. Thank you. Thanks, 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 thanks for the time. Good questions, and I always um, want to be as transparent as we can. So thanks for your time. Okay. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Bye. All righty. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. All right. Um, so we have about eight minutes left, and I know that uh, Joe Wexler is here making a comeback. Uh, hi, Joe. I don't know if Joe can hear us, but Joe's here from uh, the county. He's uh, going to talk along with Mr. Uh, Frank Suma about uh, the agenda item regarding the uh, center street parking. So um, I think we're going to do that in, in fourth order. Um, I don't know if Joe's connected now, but um, so uh, we have a couple things on the agenda. We'll just kind of run through those really quick while we have the eight minutes left. Um, there's quite a few things in uh, third order. Uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to um, kind of bring up that I'm a little concerned about is 3F, and that's the correspondence from Kohansky Company regarding the audit. Um, so according to the update that we received, they're looking uh, to complete the audit by mid-December, which is obviously not uh, you know, good news. We would like the audit completed, um, number one, on time, and number two, uh, before you know, we're well, before we look at the budget because it helps to have the audit done when you're looking at the budget. Um, so, what I'll ask tonight, uh, Mrs. Reed, if if we can find out from the business administrator and from Kohansky and Company, um, you know, why that why we can't get that done earlier and why that's uh, going to be completed in mid December. I'm sure there's an answer, uh, but I, I'd like to know that sooner than than later because I think it's important. So that was the one thing that uh, that I was going to bring up there. In terms of uh, fifth order with the uh, um, the agenda items, pretty straightforward. Five uh, B is just dedicating a portion of uh, Cobb Avenue adjacent to the uh, fire station on East Mountain for Mr. Tanzitz. We did the proclamation last week, so uh, that's in in honor of his 100 100th birthday, and uh, that's that's good stuff. Five uh, C, we're just accepting two hundred and fifty dollar donation from Ricardo's Market. Uh, for the police canine unit, so we appreciate that. And then uh, 5D is the city applying for grant money, a multimodal grant uh, in the amount of $306,000 to replace 2,036 street signs, which I think is, I, I was really, really uh, pleased to see that. Um, I think maybe two or three weeks ago, I gave an update in terms of uh, the uh, street sign program management uh, in the city. Which you know we've we've come a long way there uh, in um, you know having that data uh, kind of more streamlined. Uh, so I was really glad to see that. Um, the only other thing I want to mention in terms of the agenda is we are bringing back the capital budget tonight. Um, we do we did receive all of the answers to all the questions that were submitted on the capital budget. The last few uh, answers came in the other day. I'll read those in fifth order. They were on the uh, DPW questions. So we did receive those, which I appreciate. So uh, Kyle will, or not Kyle, Tom will be making a motion when we start the meeting to bring that back. And then if there's any questions or comments, we'll, we'll take that in seventh order. Um, we did receive uh, information on the healthcare legislation. I, I, I don't want to, this is just my own personal feeling. I don't want to bring that back up for a vote uh, tonight for two reasons. Number one, we didn't receive the disclosure yet uh, from Willis Towers. So I think we need to wait on that. And number two, in the email that was sent to Mrs. Reed uh, from the administration, we did get kind of a breakdown of uh, all of the, the, the bidders on for the healthcare uh, broker. But it said in the email that that was supposed to be confidential. And I did talk to Kevin today. I'm not sure, um, I think we need to speak with the business administrator to find out. I know that they said they're in negotiations, uh, but I, 
I think we were just asking for a breakdown similar to the one provided for the final kind of the final four. And I, I mean, I think that should be public unless I'm missing something. But uh, Kevin, did you take a look at that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, can you hear me? OK, Bill? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, so I think that the, what they circulated was a um, was an, an internal document that was generated or, or prepared by the, the business department. So uh, we I don't think we should uh, speak to it publicly. And in, in, in before we determine two things, is it, it could contain some proprietary um, information or information that's proprietary to the um, to those who bid. And secondly, we should first determine whether that that documentation is anywhere, any way being uh, used um, as uh, in terms of negotiations with the laborers, with the labor unions. And and so um, the both of those f would be exceptions to public disclosure. So I think at first, we, let's just let's just um, make sure we understand what the purpose of that document is, what's contained in it. And so we don't um, we don't re uh, disclose anything that should not otherwise be uh, disclosed. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. And we're not bringing it up for a vote tonight anyway. So uh, that, that's fine with me. Um, and then we're, we're still waiting on the disclosure. Um, other than that, I, I don't have anything in terms of the agenda. We have about three minutes left before we start our regular meeting. And then we have Mr. Suma here and uh, Mr. Wexer from the county to talk about the uh, Center Street um, agenda item. Does anybody have anything for the good of the order here before we... Uh, start our meeting at 630. Just okay, 7B. So it's, <clears throat> uh, we're voting on 7B before, um, you know, the actual we're voting on the street and six so it's still in six order. So I, I, I kind of have a problem with that. Like, well, I think, uh, and you know Kevin, you can, no? yeah, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, but so 7B is just the maintenance agreement. So that's uh, a resolution. So that's why it went from fifth order to seventh order. Uh, Six order is an ordinance because we're actually approving the debt. We're making the street uh, a one way. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying, Mark. If, so if we, what I think we should do is let's hear from Mr. Suma in, uh, in fourth order and, and Mr. Wexler. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if, if there are issues and there's more questions, uh, you know, I don't have a problem with, with tabling it, if that's what everybody wants to do. Um, but. Bill, it's Kevin up. Uh you know, uh, Mark raises a good point in that the, the resolution for the maintenance agreement is conditioned upon the um, council approving the center street being converted to a one way. So maybe, and again, we can, we can see what, what, um, what, what, what takes place during the meeting, but I don't necessarily think that would be a bad idea to table it and then pass them together. Um, okay. We, Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Good point. Anybody else on uh, agenda items or anything in the last minute here before we start the regular meeting? No, I think some of the questions I had, you already raised, so I'm all right. Uh, okay. Bill, it's Kevin. Uh, I, I, I had an opportunity to speak with the project manager from Pennsylvania American Water regarding uh, the project taking place along um, Birch Street and um, in South Scranton. And she was very helpful in explaining to me uh, the scope of, the, of, of this project, which is, it's, it, it, it's enormous. It's a 11 foot um, pipe being installed some 40 feet below, uh, below the surface. And she's very aware, aware of the fact that this has taken much longer than is customary for, for a sewer project. So what I asked her to do is to pro provide us with a written update uh, with a projected timeline for completion. And she said she would do that and, and, and actually include photographs just to show council and members of the public how uh, the scope of this project. And um, uh, she was, I have to say she was very, uh, very helpful and informative. So I should have that for next, hopefully next week's meeting. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. No problem. Okay, uh, we are gonna start our meeting. So let me share my screen here with the I got it.
Okay, I'd like to call this public meeting to order. Would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world, and also for those who have passed away in our community, especially Mr. Patrick Greco, who was employed for more than 25 years with the city's Department of Public Works, and Mr. Howard Hinckley, a member of the Scranton Fire Department for 32 years, retiring as a captain. Let us also take a moment of silence again tonight for people in our community, our country, and our world who have passed away and who are suffering from the coronavirus. This pandemic has turned our world upside down, but we must remain hopeful and strong. We continue to pray for the doctors, the nurses, the researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they have protection and peace. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, let us stick together, endure together, mourn together, and in place of our anxiety, let us have hope and peace. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Carrera, roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Present. Mr. McAndrew? Present. Dr. Rothschild? Here. Mr. Donahue? Here. Mr. Gond? Here. Thank you, Ms. Carrera. Councilman Schuster? Um, I would like to make a motion that I would move that uh, I'd like to make the motion to take from the table file of council number 20 for 2020. Is there a second? Second. Good. On the question, uh, this piece is being taken from the table and placed in seventh order for a final vote. This ordinance is the capital budget for 2021. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning of the meeting, uh, we did receive the last set of uh, answers to the questions that were posed from members of the public. Uh, this portion would be on the, the uh, DPW part of the capital budget. So I will take the time to read those into the record in seventh order. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Uh, Mrs. Reed, please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A correspondence received from Thomas J. McLean and Associates Incorporated, dated October 13, 2020, regarding parks assessment update. 3B, correction to attachment of item 3A on the September 8, 2020 agenda regarding emergency declaration related to the August 23, 2020 cyber attack. 3C, Lackawanna County Fresh Start Diversionary Drug Treatment Program received October 13, 2020. 3D, Controller's Report for month ending September 30, 2020. 3E, Correspondence received from OECD Executive Director dated October 15, 2020 regarding open application period for CDBG Home ESG 2021 funding cycle. 3F, correspondence received from Kohansky PC, excuse me, Kohansky Company PC, dated October 16, 2020, regarding City of Scranton audit update. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. Are there any comments on any of the third order items? Um, I just wanted to add a comment. I um, also want to express my disappointment in in 3F that um, the audit has been seems like extended or that they won't be getting back to us as soon as we uh, thought they would by the by the deadline uh, that was previously given. So, um, you know, I, um, like Councilman Gahan, I would like some answers as to um, why it's been extended what the reason is for the delay and how we might be able to uh, get that completed quicker. 
Thank you. I agree. Anyone else? I would just that, like to add, I, I agree there. I mean, this is my third year on council and it seems like it's just the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I think in terms of uh, the communication between um, the audit company and council, it has been better in, in my view, just because we have been getting regular updates. But I would agree that I think we definitely need the audit completed before we start talking about the budget. Um, and I don't think that, uh, you know, mid-December is acceptable. So, uh, Mrs. Reed, if you can uh, follow up with Mr. Dealey and uh, Kohansky to see if there's any way that we could get that completed uh, before the budget, that'd be great. Any other comments on third order items? If not received and filed. Do any council members have any announcements at this time? I have a quick one. So um, this Wednesday, October 21st, 2020, the Scranton Police Department will be uh, holding a car seat safety check during the Friends of the Poor food giveaway. So this, you know, this is a, a twofer for some people. It's between 2.30 and 5.30 p.m. at Scranton High, uh, which is, you know, 63 Munchak Way, Scranton, PA. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay, I have a few. Uh, Scranton tomorrow was scheduled for a public caucus at 5.45 p.m. next week, October 27th. So they're gonna give us their quarterly update. Uh, council is gonna reschedule our regular meeting uh, from Tuesday, November 3rd, which is election day, to Monday, November 2nd at 6.30 p.m. City Hall is gonna be closed on Tuesday, November 3rd for the election day holiday. Um, we have a caucus scheduled with uh, Hubert Rowland and Grubick for Tuesday, November 10th at 5.45 p.m. to discuss the city's approach to stormwater management. And uh, finally, OECD's executive director asks that an announcement be made regarding the following. Effective Wednesday, October 21st, 2020, applications will be available for the City of Scranton's Community Development Block Grant Program, CDBG, Home Investment Partnership Program, and the Emergency Solutions Grant, administered by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Project activities must be consistent with the needs and objectives identified in the City of Scranton's five-year consolidated plan, principally for extremely low and moderate income families. Eligible applicants must be incorporated for profit, nonprofit, or public organizations or business, businesses able to undertake their approved activity within the boundaries of the City of Scranton. Applications are available online at www.scrantonworks.org and must be submitted electronically no later than 5 p.m. on Friday, November 20th. Public comment on the CDBG Home ESG programs will be accepted at the November 10th, 2020 council meeting scheduled at 6.30 p.m. To submit comment, email lread at scrantonpa.gov or by U.S. mail at Scranton Municipal Building 340 North Washington Ave, Scranton, PA 18503, attention city clerk's office no later than 3 p.m on November 10th, 2020. Public comment will also be received until November 20th, 2020 at www.scrantonworks.org or by emailing scranton311 at scrantonpa.gov. Mrs. Reed, fourth order. Thank you, fourth order, citizens participation. Okay, we're gonna start citizens participation today a little bit differently. We have, uh, Mr. Suma, who is, I hope I'm saying your name right, uh, who is the county engineer. Um, and we also have flashback. I'm having flashbacks here, Joe. Uh, have Joe flashbacks. Wexler. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, right? Um, they're all good, Bill. They're all good. That's good. Um, we have Joe Wexler here, who is the uh, purchasing director for uh, Lackawanna County. And actually, uh, Joe is instrumental in um, one piece of legislation that's on our agenda tonight, uh, dedicating that portion of Cobb Avenue adjacent to the firehouse for Mr. Tanzitz. And uh, he also coordinated the uh, the uh, event, I think it was last weekend or two weekends ago for Mr. Tanzitz. So that was great along with Mr. Uh, Terry Osborne. So thanks again for that, Joe. Um, but you gentlemen are here tonight to talk about the uh, uh, legislation we have on our agenda uh, making Center Street a one-way from a two-way. So uh, Mr. Suman, Mr. Wexler, I'll turn it over to you. If you just want to go through that legislation, explain it, and then uh, we'll open it up on the floor for questions. Thank you. Yep. Um, Joe, do you want me to summarize? No, I, Frank, since you were in, in charge of the design, I figured I'll just uh, let you do your thing. 
Sure, sure. Okay. So um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Frank Suma with GPI Consulting Engineers on behalf of Lackawanna County. Um, so Lackawanna County is requesting that the city of Scranton make the 300 block of Center Street, which is the block between Wyoming Avenue and Penn Avenue, a one-way street with the direction of travel being from Penn toward Wyoming. Um, additionally, the county is requesting that the left turn movements coming from Center Street onto Wyoming be restricted from the hours of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, with, with the repurposing of the globe as now the county government center, there is a need for vehicles to be parked on this block of Center Street. Uh, center Street, it, it is not wide enough to accommodate uh, two-way traffic safely. There is only 16 feet of travel width between designated, currently designated parking areas and existing obstructions. Um, additionally, we feel that vehicles entering onto Wyoming Avenue during peak travel hours of Wyoming Avenue, if, if that left turn movement was restricted, it would improve safety conditions. Um, there, is, there is appropriate signage and pavement markings uh, proposed with this request, including do not enter signs at Wyoming Ave, at the Wyoming Ave end of Center Street, uh, one-way traffic signs at the Penn Ave end of Center Street, white painted directional arrows on the pavement, as well as a no left turn 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. sign at the center Wyoming intersection. Additionally, in combination with this uh, request and proposal, there also is a road maintenance agreement, um, which would state that the county would take over the maintenance associated with this block, including paving, repairs, snow plowing, signing, or any other maintenance related activities. No questions okay. or Joe, anything to add on, on, on your end? Yeah, part of part of the reason why we were interested in, in this legislation uh, is to give us control of that court uh, because of there's there are parking issues in that court. Illegal parking happens in that court every day. Uh, as part of this plan, we are requesting that there are four um, parking spots that the county can control as a, as a municipal government, similar to what the Scran Scran City government has in Dick's Court. Uh, those four parking spots would be utilized by uh, either municipal vehicles or perhaps contractors that are there doing business. Um, prior to this, I watched the meeting with, with uh, ABM and, and NDC. As you know, there is no really non-metered parking on Wyoming Avenue. Um, so we have a few county designated spots in front of the Globe Store, but otherwise Wyoming Avenue is all uh, public, public metered parking. So we do, we do require some spots in that alley or on Center Street um, that we can use for municipal vehicles. Okay, I, I don't really have any questions, uh, Joe, other than, you know, I, I'm just looking at this two ways, really. If we don't do anything and we deny this, then the issues still exist. And I do think there is an issue when you come off, because I took a drive by the other day, when you're coming out, people turning left, that's dangerous. I don't know how you get two cars down there because uh, it's really tight. So if we don't do anything, the problems still exist. Uh, this, I think um, the, the county will maintain that, that section, which is good for the city, it takes that off of our plate. Um, I, I'm not seeing any downside here, but does anybody have any questions? I have a question. So if we give up, give up the maintenance of this street, do we lose uh, fuel tax revenue? What fuels you mean? Yes. I I don't yeah. believe we do. No, I, I don't. I don't think I, will, I. I don't think we we would. But and if if we it did more appropriate for um and, and and Joe maybe our county solicitor could look into that. But from my reading through of the uh, maintenance agreement. That, that was not included in the standard language of the agreement. So I believe whatever was in place now, that, that calculation for roads owned by the city has no change um, with regard to this proposal from, from, from the documents I've, I've reviewed. It's, it's still a city road, uh, right. Councilman McAndrew. It's just that they're agreeing to maintain it. And, in, 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 and as part of that agreement, which is important from a legal standpoint is they, the county has agreed to indemnify the city for any 
claims of injury or or other or other claims that could be brought in connection with that 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 roadway. So um, I don't believe my opinion is uh, that that would not reduce our calculation towards a liquid fuel reimbursement because it's still a city road. Okay. And I, I know that I, there were some questions last week as to whether this is an alley or a, a court, but uh, Mr. Suma, is it, is, it, is it greater than 20 feet in width, the roadway, you know, offhand? It is probably slightly greater than 20 feet. The trapway would be 16 feet. Okay, so in including obstruction to what is uh, uh, your existing parking area. So it's, it's really a, you would, you would classify as a 16 foot travel way. Travel way, okay. Yeah, for, 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 how, for its use right now, because there is um, existing parking there happening right now. Because our, our code defines an alley as um, any thoroughfare having a right of way width of 20 feet or less. Um, but I think that, um, We've been advised that this was already uh, that this isn't a, this isn't an alley by our city engineer. Is that correct, Lori? Uh, that is correct, Attorney Hayes. It's a street. It's a street. So then, you know, the no parking prohibition on a, uh, to out for alleys and courts under our city code would not apply here. That was just an issue, Frank and Joe, that was raised at, at last week's uh, council meeting. Oh, okay. So we're clear okay. To clarify that. Any other questions or concerns? Yeah, I um, I said a real quick one. I, I understand, um, you know, the need for increased safety uh, over at Center Street. Uh, I was just wondering if we know of any accidents. Like, has there been a rash of accidents? Uh, in that area along that street as a result of the parking or pedestrian related accidents, anything like that? I, I'm not aware of any, um, but it is, it is a very congested area. Uh, so there is, there is quite a bit of pedestrian traffic that goes through there. Um, and I, I think this will kind of alleviate having to be concerned about both ways, even though you should. It should take some of the pressure off of looking both ways while you go through that street. Okay, that was here. Thank you. So, this replies from me, um, myself, um, GPI, and, and, and our representation as county engineer. I don't have any record of any um, accident history there. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Yeah, I'm aware of there was one lawsuit that the, the city was sued uh, where an, an individual fell in that on that roadway, uh, on that block on Center Street. I actually defended the case for the city and it was dismissed on um, summary judgment, but that was a, that was several years ago. Okay, thanks Kevin. So currently we're talking about four spots um, remaining in that after this occurs. How many spots are there at, at this point in time, do you know? Legal, legal, legal spots. There's if if you were to do it, I think legally, Frank, right? There's only four spots that could be there. Um, but right now, there's probably fifteen to twenty vehicles in that out. And that I gotta call start calling it a street now. On that street, uh, every day that are that are parked illegally. Okay, so at this point, about fifteen cars are parked there, but only four of them would be considered legal, and we're gonna move it to four four legal spots. Yeah, and the four legal spots would be under the county's the county's control. Okay, thank you. That that answers that. How about um, when it comes to that time frame, eight a.m. to five p.m. Um, looking at a like a traffic pattern from the in regards to traffic pattern, does that become confusing in any other circumstances that you've seen, Mr. Suma? Um, I'm not I'm not sure exactly. Um, uh, are are you asking if it's confusing for a driver who would be on center street trying to navigate left from Wyoming that they would have to circle around the block. Is that what you're talking about? That's, that's correct. When you were talking about some of the arrows, I think you were talking about painting some of the arrows for left-hand turns, this and that. Oh, that, being that it's at 8 AM to 5 PM timeframe in those hours prior to 8 AM or after 5 PM, does that become confusing for anyone or have you? I, like that? No, no, I wouldn't think so. The, the arrows I mentioned would just be, um, to designate the 
proper directional traffic on Center Street. Um, the, as far as the turning movements at the end of Center Street, uh, it would just be, I'm sure you've seen elsewhere, just a, a standard um, sign that, that, that uh, does not allow left-hand turns for a certain time frame. Um, so a typical driver would just be able to make a, a right-hand turn, and then the very next block is Lackawanna, which has a which is a stop light, and then they could navigate wherever toward toward wherever their final destination is. So I, I don't see that being confusing to a driver. Okay, and in any other similar circumstances you've seen in the past, that it hasn't been confusing as well. No, I don't see. It. I, I think the I think the, the bigger concern would be um, cars entering onto Wyoming Avenue when it might be peak hours for Wyoming Avenue. Um, it's just hard to make a left-hand turn. You have, do have a lot of pedestrian traffic during that same um, time, time frame. We'd have a lot of people walking to and from the county government center. Um, so it's just that much harder for a driver to, to make that left-hand maneuver. Um, and, and why, why not um, restrict the movement as opposed to potentially allowing a, a safety issue? Okay, all right, thank you. Any I other questions? I have one more sure. question. So if there's um, 15 to 20 people parking there illegally every day, um, so there's no enforcement, probably because we're down an enforcement officer because of a furlough or not, I don't know. I'm just, so what's to stop these people parking in the proposed four designated spots? I mean, we can throw uh, barn well, on Councilman, them? Councilman, okay. Councilman, one of the things is if the county maintains control, we do have sheriffs. Okay. Uh, on the pro on, on site every day at the government center. So if the if the center street is under the control of the county, I believe the the sheriff's department can patrol there, not issue tickets, but can but can patrol there and, and advise people that they're parked illegally. Okay. Also, I may add to that the the proposal and and for those of you who review the plans that go with it, um, the proposal also does include for appropriate signage to designate what is legal parking, what is not legal parking. And like Joe mentioned, then that, that monitoring enforcement fall back on the county. Okay, any other questions? Uh, so I do agree that there are some issues there and I'm sure the illegal parking has something because I believe it's civilian or civilian parking that has to enforce that because ABM and NDC only enforce where there is um, meters downtown, I believe. So I believe it's the civilian parking enforcement that's responsible for enforcing that now. Unfortunately, we had some layovers there, but that's be so I understand the whole safety issue with the whole alley. I have a little trouble accepting the four spots. Um, could you further justify that? Uh, what's the need there? Yeah, these, for the most part, Councilman, these are going to be municipal vehicles that come and go during the course of the day. It, it may be assessor's office. It may be um, the sheriff's department. It may be uh, a, a director or so um, that need to have access in and out of that building quickly. So that's why those four spots. I can assure you that none of these spots, none of these vehicles that will be parking in these spots are in any of the ABM system or NDC system. Uh, the county is probably one of the largest supporters of that system. We have uh, fleet vehicles that we pay monthly uh, parking rates for. We also have several uh, of our employees also pay the monthly rate to park in the buildings. Um, so to alleviate some of your concern, those four spots currently right now would not be income generating vehicles for the Scranton parking system. Uh, for the most part, they would be vehicles that are tagged with municipal license plates um, and for the most part, those vehicles are not being ticketed, so they're not getting uh, parking tickets throughout the system. Uh, so the four spots more of our convenience, once again, very similar to what's behind City Hall, um, where municipal employees, directors um, have spots reserved in Dick's courts for pretty much the same reason. So, Joe, the county does have an agreement with ABM and DC on a certain number of spots. There's no, there's no particular um, maximum or minimum councilman, but we do have, like I say, we park fleet vehicles in there. Um, the CYS has a lot of vehicles that parks in there that are that those are reimbursed by the state. So there isn't an actual contract for that, 
but we do have quite a few, uh, like I said, employees and co county owned vehicles that park within the system. Uh, we're, we're anxious also to see the completion of the uh, electric city completion. Um, as, as people may or may not know, there is an entrance from the uh, electric city garage onto our second floor of the county building. Uh, it actually is the, is that floor actually is the area that has most of the public uh, offices there, voting registration, uh, assessor's office, controller's office, treasurer's office. Um, once that garage is back in, in shape that people feel comfortable using it, it'll be an excellent opportunity for county employees and citizens to access uh, the government center from the second floor of the electric city garage. Well, and, and that's one of the reasons why I asked for the, you know, what's our, what their uh, <clears throat> occupancy was for monthly parking in that garage. Cause especially because of the further or the previous presentation we were just given, you know, that the financial hardships that the parking system is facing given everything going on, you know, that might be another opportunity to, you know, discuss with the county ways to work together there. Yeah, the, the one customer that did not leave during the pandemic was Lackawanna County. We paid uh, for our vehicles through the whole, through the whole month. Uh, we have several handicapped employees that park in the electric city and right now they're dispersed uh, either up to the uh, Casey garage or up to the medallion garage, which is, which is a bit of a hardship, but we're, you know, we're dealing with it. But uh, going forward, I would like to see a, a relationship between the city, uh, NDC, ABM to make use of that second floor uh, access into our building. One, one last thing I would ask for, Joe, could you just put what you said about what those parking spaces would be used for into writing? Just a brief sure. explanation so we can attach it to our resolution then moving forward. Yeah, uh, we aren't, one thing I can say, Councilman, is we're, we're not gonna designate them specifically um, like they are on the, in the city. Uh, I think those are just uh, designated specifically to controller's office, city clerk, whatever. Uh, we'll provide you with who we expect to use those, um, use those spots, but pretty much we're gonna, the parking spots itself would be identified as municipal vehicles, uh, county, with county medallions. Uh, so you don't, because they'll vary during the course of the day. So maybe an assessor will be there and then maybe somebody from CYS might be there or someone uh, from the veterans office. So I'll give you a list of who we think will park there, but the signs themselves will be specific to the county uh, medallion type of system that we'll design. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, just a comment, final comment here. Uh, first, thank you, Mr. Suma and Mr. Wexer for agreeing to come in and explain that legislation. Um, I think it, in looking at this, I think it's really important that we support the county um, as they continue to transition into the government center. And I think we have to remember that the county supports uh, our downtown. And you know, I, don't, I don't see a problem in reciprocating uh, that support. And I think this makes uh, that street safer and um, makes sense to me. So uh, thank you, gentlemen, for coming in, and we appreciate it, and we hope you have a good night and stay safe. Thanks again. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. All right, thanks. thanks. Good team, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. I like hitting this lead button. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe, there's a mute button, too, now we have. We could have used that a couple <laughs> years ago. Could have. Would have, should have, could have. Would have, should have. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, um, at this time, would uh, someone please make a motion to accept public comment from the following individuals, Marie Schumacher and Faye Franis? Make a motion to accept public comment. Uh, second. There's been a motion and a second to accept public comment. Mrs. Reed, can you please read the, the public comment into the record? Yes, thank you. The first is um, a submission from Marie Schumacher as follows. First, clarification requested at last week's meeting when I asked how many open court issues against the city are there? How many outstanding lawsuits are there? And while you are at it, would you see what is holding up the county reassessment case someone filed? Again, it was disappointing to not find any more answers to capital budget questions in third order. When do you think the vote on this will be back on the table? 
I was raised in a, a stitch in time saves nine home. So I hope we will not push needed expense out of the 2021 election budget that will cost much more in future budgets. Back again to last week when the president stated the reason for extending the Act 47 exit was to enact payroll prep. However, Pell's endorsement of the extension dealt only with financial and did not deal directly with payroll prep. 3A provides a tentative project schedule with which I find insensitive and makes me wonder about this company. Selection of November, December for meeting with neighborhood groups, months when people are likely most busy with two holidays. I would also ask for identification of the important neighborhood group. I believe all neighborhood groups should be included and how will these groups be notified? I would suggest sufficient time to give thought to the requested information. Also, is this project likely to be affected by the reduced 2021 budget expenditures? 3B reports the city can commit its $25,000 share of the cyber attack expense without engaging in the competitive bidding process. Is sufficient funding available in the contingency account to cover this? And if not, from what account will this money for transferred? 3F is most disappointing and not in compliance with city code. Getting the audit after the next year's budget is unacceptable, and I would like to know how you are going to correct this. The public notice regarding the 2021 action plan has me confused. How is the public expected to comment on the programs on November 10 when the program submittal cutoff is November 20? I learned from today's Times Tribune that volunteers are being overseen by the city's licensing inspection and permits department deputy director. Considering the decrepit condition of so much of the city, I think a priority reset is in order. May I suggest OECD use some of our federal funds to prepare a guideline for neighborhood associations who want to clean up needs definition public properties and non-public properties to which they do not have title. We simply don't need to centralize such endeavors, but we do need to protect those who choose to do so. Finally, as my five minutes will soon be used, I request taxpayers be allowed more than five minutes at the 2021 budget hearing submitted by Marie Schumacher. Uh, the next submittal from Faye Franis. Council, I have to agree with City Council for wanting to give the fire chief $84,000. When Captain Lucas was given $95,800 to hold the fire chief position, that was wrong from the very beginning. Captain Lucas was in a union. The fire chief is non-union. When my brother-in-law, Rich Pika, was fire chief, he never made what he did as a union member of the department. Rightfully so. So I'm hoping the mayor is not trying to please the unions to get votes in an election. The unions and the University of Scranton run this city and it needs to stop now. I was told by the mayor there is a strategy in place by Mary Jo Sheridan and Attorney O'Brien. I would like to know exactly what that strategy is. I understand there is an RFP out for someone to start collecting the delinquent garbage fees. I also understand this company will buy these delinquent fees from the city and then they will go after the properties that are not paid up. That's good, but not good enough. If this company is only going to put liens on these delinquent properties, that is not the way to go. Putting liens on properties has not made people pay what they have not paid in years. These people do not care about liens. The city has a law that they refuse to follow that I will repeat again. The administrative code states if a person does not pay their garbage fee, the DPW does not have to pick up their garbage. I know every person who does pay their fee would like all the people in their block to pay theirs. So just passing this off to a company is not helping those who do not pay, not unless you follow through with this law. No need for a plastic bag excuse from council. Councilwoman Dempsey and council passed a law saying all garbage cans must have lids, therefore no health hazard. Also, why does the mayor allow this company who paid Mayor Courtright for their contract to collect delinquent garbage fees to continue to reap the benefits of what they take in? 
considering they broke the law, why is their contract still in place? That sends a bad message from the mayor. Pay to play and you can keep your contract. I also understand you hired a company to take care of the parks and want them to get in touch with important neighborhoods. Wow, gee, I sure wish I knew who these important people in these important neighborhoods are. Why would you pay a company to do this work when you have the DPW to do this work, especially when the city is hurting financially? Break that contract and have the DPW do this work. One more thing, your reasoning for extending the exit plan is ridiculous. We never should have had this exit plan extended to start with. I guess this council and the mayor love being distressed. File bankruptcy, help the people. Enough of distressed city. Get us out of this distressed status. What you are doing is not getting us out. It's only keeping us in. By the way, I read this email back. It took four minutes. And that was submitted from Dave Francis, and that is all the public comment this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. Uh, I would just ask that we submit um, all of the questions that were posed to the administration. And uh, Solicitor Hayes, if you can just find out how many outstanding lawsuits there are currently against the city. Uh, that's a question that Ms. Schumacher had posed. Um, the only other comment I wanna make because both Ms. Schumacher and Ms. Franis had mentioned it is uh, in the third order tonight, uh, McLean Associates had provided um, an overview of the parks uh, assessment uh, project, uh, the contract that they got. Um, so they gave us a tentative project schedule. And one of the things that both Ms. Schumacher and Ms. Frana said uh, identified in there is it says city, city with some support from McLean Associates will interact with important neighborhood groups to compile a list of issues and wishes. I, I don't think the intent there, in fact, I know the intent there wasn't to say that they're looking at specific neighborhood groups. They're gonna interact with all neighborhood groups. Um, so that the word important there, I think was is being uh, misconstrued. It's not uh, that they're, you know, think one neighborhood group is more important than the other. I know uh, and have been working with McLean Associates now for a while um, and, and they deal with the city. They, they deal with all neighborhood groups and they've been at many neighborhood meetings. Um, and those are the only comments I have. Anybody else on the question? All those in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it and so moved. Mrs. Reed. Fifth order, 5A motion. Councilman Schuster, any motions or comments? No, nothing at this time. Thank you. Councilman McAndrew, any motions or comments? I'd like to make a motion to table 5B until we get all the information uh, out of sixth order. Center Street. Seven. What? Seven B. I'm sorry. What? Did, seven B. What did I say? Five B. Seven B. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Could you restate that, Councilman McAndrew? I would like to table seven B, please. Okay. There's a. a Second. There's a okay. There's a motion uh, on the floor to table agenda item seven B, and there's a second on the question. Okay, uh, Solicitor Hayes, it's your recommendation that we table this and bring it back next week in order to pass both 7B and 6A together as one kind of package? That's right, because the 7B, 7B the, the resolution is only gonna take effect if we approve the ordinance, which would, um, trans would convert Center Street to a one-way street during the hours indicated. So, or, one-way street so yeah my my recommendation is that they be taken up uh, separate items but on the, at the same meeting i think the agreement should be um the res the resolution should be taken up after uh the ordinance uh relating to center street on, okay. on the same night okay so then mrs reed will just uh set the guide up that way to have um 7b be read uh, and brought back up after uh 6a Correct. When she finished the motion, yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody else on the question? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of tabling agenda item 7B signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and 7B is tabled. Councilman McKinder? That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Dr. Rothschild, any motions or comments? 
Uh, no, not as, at this time. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Dunahue, any motions or comments? Not at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, I received uh, several calls this weekend regarding an incident um, with our police department and uh, between fifth, apparently between 15 to 20 trucks and vehicles with uh, Trump campaign flags uh, were going basically to drive through uh, Scranton from what I'm, I'm being told. Um, they started downtown. Uh, one of the, the lead cars in, in this pack had an obscenity that was plastered uh, in very large letters on the windshield. Um, so as you can imagine, uh, I had received several phone calls throughout Saturday. Um, and the calls were not really centered around the fact that there was, you know, vehicles with Trump flags. They were centered around two things. Number one, um, the, the fact that there was apparently two Scranton police cars that escorted these vehicles throughout the city from, uh, down, I think down Mulberry street through downtown, uh, up Pitson Avenue and then up, up Bernie Avenue. And they had their sirens on. Um, and the other issue was the fact that there was uh, one of the cars had a, a large obscenity written across the front of the windshield. Um, so I did call acting chief Nemeka, uh, who was looking into exactly what happened. Um, he did call me back, which I appreciate it. Um, and he said that that probably should not have happened. Uh, the fact that there was two uh, police vehicles that escorted uh, this political parade through the city. Um, I did ask, speak to the mayor um, and she said that they were investigating the incident. So I, I do have two questions. Number one, uh, who in the police department authorized the use of city police vehicles to escort uh, what amounts in my estimation from what, what I've been told, a political parade throughout the city? Um, and my second question would be, did the group pay for the escort? Did they pay for that uh, police escort through the city? Who requested the escort uh, from that group? To me, it does not seem wise, a, a, like a wise use of taxpayer funds. And I was especially concerned when I received a, a call from an older gentleman who lives in Manuka, uh, who was outside playing with his grandson in his front yard. And they were subjected to the obscenity on the front of this vehicle, which is, is not bad enough. Uh, they were confused as to why we had two police vehicles with sirens escorting this uh, parade throughout our city. Um, so it, it lacks common sense. Um, I have to question why we would take two police officers off the streets, two police cars off the streets to escort between 15 to 20 pickup trucks and a car with a, a, a huge obscenity on it around the city for purely partisan political candidate in a federal election. Uh, I don't think it's right, whether it was for Donald Trump, Joe Biden, whoever. Um, so again, I received uh, multiple calls from people who were not happy with this, and I do not blame them because uh, I was not happy myself. Um, again, I was told by the mayor that uh, this, there, there's a, you know, they're looking into it. It's, it's a, I believe, an internal investigation. But I would like those two questions answered because I think it's important. Uh, to find out who actually authorized it, number one, and did they pay for uh, that escort throughout the city? Um, and I also wonder if it's a, would that be a violation of the ethics code or the Hatch Act? Um, I don't know, so we'll have to look into that. Um, second thing, I received a letter from OECD that was made out uh, to the contract manager of Lackawanna County in regards to the city of Scranton's COVID-19 expenditures. Uh, this is gonna be in third order next week. Um, due to COVID-19, according to this memo, the city of Scranton had been sending commingled recycling to the Lackawanna County Recycling Center. Uh, the September info invoice for this amounts to $3,997.20. So they're adding that on to um, uh, the amount that was submitted that the council passed back on July 28, 2020. Also, council received a memo from the HR department. Uh, I had um, I had asked about the local internship program um, and how this, you know, how that works, how that's been working. Um, I do think that it's a great thing that the city has engaged with uh, the Pennsylvania State and Local Internship Program. Uh, it's called the SLIP program to provide and pay for interns uh, throughout the city. I think that's a good thing. So we were provided, and this will be in third order next week, 
um, an overview of the program. So there were several uh, interns that, summer interns that worked for the city. Uh, this memo details what department uh, these, these people worked in. Um, they were paid $10.35 an hour. They worked between eight to 10 weeks. Um, and I think a few hours uh, a day in nine departments with multiple interns being offered permanent employment opportunities. One of the questions that I did have that uh, I had Mrs. Reed uh, follow up with, with uh, the administration on was uh, Amber Viola, the HR director said that three of these interns did not qualify for uh, those program dollars from the state, but they also were paid interns. Uh, so I, would, I did ask uh, how exactly they were paid uh, if they were paid from city funds, what account, uh, what budget account did that come out of? So be looking forward to the answers to those questions. Also, again, this will be in third order next week for public review. We received, uh, council received a memo from the um, HR department uh, regarding an internal audit of the tax and fee status on all employees beginning December 1st, 2020. So the city's human resources department is gonna be conducting this audit uh, to make sure that all city employees are current on any uh, taxes and, and fees, like the garbage fee, for example. Um, delinquencies can range from the waste and refuse bill collection, uh, any tax debt owed to the city, rental registration, uh, as well as health insurance and workman's, co workman's uh, compensation bill delinquencies and any other monies related to the subjection of city collection. Uh, this is something that came up a few years ago. I think the, if I'm not mistaken, the newspaper may have done a, um, an analysis and found that there were several city employees that owed uh, significant amounts in garbage fees. Um, and at that time, I, I did call on the city to take some kind of action uh, to recoup these fees because I don't, it sends the wrong message if we have a bunch of city employees who are getting paid with city funds and, and, and then not paying uh, uh, the garbage fees or, or any other fees that the city has. So I was glad to see this uh, memo from the HR department and um, hopefully we can collect any outstanding delinquencies. Uh, council also received a, a memo or a statement from uh, the mayor, the De uh, business administrator, Carl Dealey and Joe O'Brien, the solicitor. This will be in third order next week as well uh, for the public to review. This was uh, a statement that informed council um, that the administration has rejected the two proposals received by the city for the collection and marketing of recyclables. And it explains their intention to issue a second RFP, which I agree with. I'm not gonna read through the whole thing, but it gives a historical background on, on the, uh, this whole issue. Um, I do wanna read a portion of it though, because I think it's important. The city received two bids for the collection of uh, and marketing of recyclables. The two bidders were GFL Environmental and JP Mascaro. Um, the uh, operator, uh, the current operator did not submit a bid. Uh, the city determined that both bids were non-responsive to the terms of the RFP for the following reasons. Uh, number one, neither GFL or Mascaro accept glass as part of the commingle. Uh, they, neither GFL or Mascaro accept Christmas trees, leaves, bushes, branches, or wood chips. And uh, Mascaro indicated that, that its bid was void if it would be required to reimburse the city for the extra cost in delivering recyclables to a facility outside of the city. And neither company completed the required disclosure form. Um, so the city is intending to issue a second RFP with the intent of securing services for the collection of recyclables at a reasonable cost. So this is something that uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on. Um, and the uh, third thing I wanted to mention was to thank the OECD director, Eileen Cipriani. Uh, we did ask for, or ask for a flow chart of the demolition process in the city. That was an outstanding question. We received that from director Cipriani. So we'll put that in third order if anyone from the public is interested. Uh, I've been asking now for quite some time for a breakdown of costs relating to the Novembrino splash pad project. Uh, council did receive those uh, figures and I'll ask that that be put in third order as well for next week uh, for public review. I am very concerned uh, in looking at what was provided. Uh, this project has been going on now for quite some time and in looking at the figures that were provided, we were hit with, the city was hit with nearly $150,000 worth of uh, change orders of um, 
of uh, change work orders, 14 change work orders uh, in total between three contractors. Um, so you can, you can see the, uh, the different amounts here. I won't go through all of them, um, but the, the total uh, base bid uh, from Scartelli Construction was $835,000. And then there were several uh, change orders that were put in. DNM Construction, $87,000 was the base bid. Again, there were several uh, uh, change orders put in and Lieber Electric, uh, several change orders put in. So I'm gonna take some time to review this documentation and I'm sure there'll be follow-up questions on that. Um, I wanna thank Mr. Trevisani and Mr. Sweet for coming in uh, tonight and giving us an update on the, uh, the parking system. Obviously I'm very concerned uh, as I think all of us are that uh, the revenue is down. I, it, it's not a surprise. I think it was expected with the pandemic. One of the things that I was glad to hear was that there is no, um, no talk at this point of raising rates outside of the rate schedule. Um, I would agree with Mr. Trevisani that that would be counterproductive at this point. Uh, we're gonna have a, a difficult enough time as a city um, you know, getting back on our feet in terms of downtown economic development once hopefully this pandemic subsides. So if, you know, when I did talk to Mr. Trevisani personally, I expressed the view that um, if we were to raise rates now, that would crush, I think that would crush bit, uh, small businesses downtown. I just don't think that it can be done. So any sort of effort, uh, any sort of uh, investment that the city can make to help uh, NDC out at this time, I think we can view that almost as an economic development um, incentive for our downtown. So I don't know what that looks like, but I'm hopeful that in the new year, uh, this pandemic turns around and, and uh, our downtown gets back to, to where it should be. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention was, uh, as I talked about in the caucus, we did receive documentation from the administration uh, regarding Willis Towers and the other uh, 10 bidders. Um, as Solicitor Hayes mentioned, uh, we're going to review that. Uh, the administration had uh, requested that we not uh, make that public yet for reasons that we discussed in the caucus. Um, and the other thing that we're waiting on is the disclosure form. So we're not going to bring that up uh, for a vote tonight. And that's all I have. Mrs. Reed. Thank you. 5B for introduction of resolution ceremoniously dedicating a portion of Cobb Avenue adjacent to the Engine 10 fire station located on East Mountain Road in honor of Charles J. Tanzitz Jr. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Um, on the question, I just wanna again, uh, <clears throat> say how wonderful I think this legislation is uh, to honor Mr. Tanzitz, a World War II veteran, uh, someone who just turned 100 years old. Um, he's lived on East Mountain for 95 years uh, of his life. Um, and I think we would consider him kind of the mayor of East Mountain. So uh, this is a great honor for him, a great honor for uh, a member of our greatest generation. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C for introduction of resolution, accepting $250 donation from Ricardo's Market Incorporated presented to the City of Scranton Police Canine Unit. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. Okay. On the question? Just want to thank Ricardo's Market uh, for supporting our, our canine uh, division in the police department. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D for introduction of resolution, ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the city of Scranton to Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development for a multimodal transportation fund grant in the amount of $306,000 to be utilized to implement phase two of the street sign project for the purchase and installation of 2,036 street signs. 
This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. Second. On the question? Um, on the question, I, I can't tell you how pleased I am to see this legislation. As I drive throughout the city, and, and as we know, the last uh, few years, there are a number, now we have a number, 2,036 street signs that are faded, uh, that are hard to see, that don't, that there's uh, intersections where there are no street signs, especially up in the hill section. Um, if you're not from the hill section and you don't know where you're going, it's hard to uh, get around up there because the street signs in a lot of places just don't exist. Um, so I am really, really pleased to see this multimodal grant and I hope that the city is successful in acquiring it. I think the one message that this will send is it's these little things like replacing, maintaining street signs. Um, it goes back to the broken windows theory. When you drive through a neighborhood and you see a street sign that's up, upside down, that's faded, it sends a message that maybe, you know, this, this isn't the type of neighborhood that you want to live in. Uh, these are the little things that we need to continue to keep on doing. And I'm glad to see that the DPW director and, and the mayor and, and her administration are being really proactive in this. I also want to thank uh, the members of the DPW, especially our sign department. And when I say sign department, you would think we would have, you know, 20 to 30 employees, but we only have two. Um, I think it's now it's Gene Reed and Dave Medici, and they're doing an outstanding job uh, with the resources that they have. And a few years ago, when the city decided with the push from council uh, to enter into an agreement with the company to come in and give us a, a, a really a great database um, in every neighborhood in the city on the street signs, the stop signs, the children at play signs, that was a great starting point for us. Because now if there's a street sign that's replaced, it goes in the database. There's a record of it. Um, and that way we can track it and 20 to 30 years from now, we're not gonna be in this position where we're going for a grant to replace, you know, 2000 and some street signs. So there's work to be done. Uh, there's work to still be done obviously, but I, I like the trajectory uh, that we're moving in. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye, opposed, the ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of the council number 31, 2020, an ordinance authorizing the city of Scranton to approve the designation of the 300 block of Center Street as a one-way street from Penn Avenue towards Wyoming Avenue with the Scranton Police Department to enforce the designations as reflected in the attached drawing C-4 Center Street parking. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I, I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Is there a second? second? On the question? Um, on the question, I'm going to be voting for this in sixth order and seventh order. Um, I want to thank Mr. Wexler and Mr. Suma for uh, the county engineer for coming in tonight. To me, this is a no-brainer. I know that there were questions. I'm glad that they were answered. Um, if we don't do anything and if we vote this down next week, then Center Street uh, remains, you know, in, I think, bad condition, unsafe, um, dangerous. Uh, this provides us with an opportunity to make that area safer for the employees that work down there. And it's also an opportunity to partner uh, once again with the county. And they have partnered with us in the past in terms of the land bank among, among a number of other things. So uh, I'll be in favor of 6A and then next week, uh, those, those two pieces in seventh order. Anyone else on the question? Uh, yes, I'm gonna vote just to move this out of sixth order, but I'm waiting to see what the, the written response we get from Mr. Wessler regarding what cars will be permitted to park um, on Center Street. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A for consideration by the committee on public works for adoption. File of the council number 30, 2020, authorizing two R5-1 do not enter signs to be installed at the intersection of Depot Street, Shawnee Avenue, 
and R6-1L horizontal left one-way signs to be installed at the intersections of Riverside Drive, Canton Place, and Riverside Drive, Depot Street. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As a chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. 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 Okay. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster. Yes. Mr. McAndrew. Yes. Dr. Rothschild. Yes. Mr. Donahue. Yes. Mr. Gaughan. Yes, I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, previously tabled. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption. Resolution number 81, 2020, appointment of Matthew Meyer, PhD, 930 Taylor Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18510, as a member of the Board of Ethics, effective October 20, 2020. Dr. Meyer will be replacing Mary Jo Sheridan, who resigned effective August 28, 2020. Dr. Meyer will fill the unexpired term of Mary Jo Sheridan, which is scheduled to expire August 31, 2022. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question? Uh, on the question, I wanna thank Mr. Meyer for, or Dr. Meyer for uh, agreeing to be on this board. I think it's so important. And I also wanna uh, tell people that if anybody's interested in um, learning more about the ethics board or reading anything related to the ethics code, uh, they did update the city of Scranton's website. So if you go to www.scrantonpa.gov, uh, there is a, a page for the ethics board and all the information is on there and they have updated that, which I appreciate. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Or I'm yes. sorry, Mr. Donahue? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. That's okay. Mr. Gone. Yes, I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D, previously tabled for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption. File of the Council Number 20, 2020, approving and accepting the City of Scranton capital budget for the year 2021, pursuant to Section 904 of the City's Home Rule Charter. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Finance? As the chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question? Yes, I'd like to take a minute uh, to read into the record the questions that council or the answers that council received regarding the DPW portion of the capital budget. Uh, I will say that I appreciate uh, the level of detail that was provided this year with the capital budget, uh, you know, it's been a little bit uh, different than in, in the past. There's been much more uh, detail provided, which I appreciate. Um, the, all of the questions that were submitted by the public have been answered by the administration. I've read those into the record over the last few weeks. And now this is kind of the final part of, of those questions. So one of the first questions was, um, are the street signs and stop signs also included in the DPW general operating budget? And the answer to that question is all relevant street signs are included in the general budget as operating expenses under traffic maintenance. Uh, the second question was how many riding mowers are being procured in 2021? Uh, the administration responded with the goal is to provide two to three new mowers depending on the bids that are received from the supplier. Um, there was a question about the second column of the Kaiser Valley Merrifield line item, uh, and they asked <laughs> under the DPW engineering department, why was that uh, the word design included? And the administration responded that that was needed uh, to include the intent of the overall scope of the project. 
Uh, the DPW vehicle narrative stated that vehicles were in need of replacement and fleet additions, and then it provided a list, but it failed to distinguish between which were replacement and which were additions. The administration responded that the list is identified on the Excel sheet provided and includes additions to the following items. Uh, one brush tractor, two double cab pickups, one asphalt roller, and one front end loader. Um, there was also a, a comment here that there was no estimate for implementing a vehicle GPS system in 2021, despite the fact that a trial will be performed in the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, the administration did provide a cost. Uh, it is now in the capital budget as $175,000 for 2021 on line 325. A, a full review of all options available to the city during the trial will be explored. And just one comment on that. This is something that I pushed for uh, after the whole gas card fiasco a year and a half ago. Every other major city, uh, PennDOT, a lot of other, you know, if you look in the private industry, they all use GPS. And it's really making, it, it will make this department, I think, much more efficient. It will help us save on uh, gas uh, fuel costs. It will help us uh, be more transparent with the public, especially in terms of um, like what PennDOT does when they have plows out. I think uh, the goal would be to have people go online and be able to see where the plows are and all that. So this is a really good program. Uh, the flood control section states escrow accounts will be used for funding. Um, please identify the available escrow accounts and the balance in each and answer why this available funding has not been used to fix the Dewey Jackson Street issue. The administration responded that the department was not aware of any special issues with this area other than what is being currently addressed. Um, they also asked for a detailed accounting of any money spent within the last five years on upgrading and or maintaining the Kaiser Valley pumping station. The administration responded that 36,000 $931.36 was spent on maintaining the station in the past five years. Uh, the administration also responded that the city will be issuing an RFP in the fourth quarter of 2020 to determine uh, how to rebuild the floodplain in the Kaiser Valley area and uh, provide an adequate uh, pump station. There's no cost estimates or timelines available at this time. Um, Let's see, uh, no, the, the uh, citizen complained that there was no funding for Merrifield Avenue until 2023. Um, the mayor and DPW are focused on this issue. The city's issuing an RFP for an engineering study to address flooding in Kaiser Valley, including Merrifield Avenue. The study is the key to unlocking federal and grant funding to be able to further mitigate flooding in Kaiser Valley. Um, and I think that was that was all. So that should answer all the questions that were posed uh, for the capital budget. Anyone else on the question? Yeah, I want to say on the question that I'm glad that all the taxpayer questions provided um, were answered before um, final passage. Because let's face it, they're, they're the ones that are paying for this budget. So I'm I'm, I'm glad they they at least got that. Mm -hmm. I Thanks. agree. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting's adjourned. Stay safe, everyone, and 